Hello, everybody! Welcome, welcome to Sunday afternoon dogger. I hope we are all doing good. Hello! <sighs> I did it. I finally moved the, the dog pen because <laughs> it hadn't been used in weeks. There was no need for it to be there anymore. So. I have, I have this part of my office back. <laughs> the pieces of it are still there. Um, like I have them here in case, just in case. Uh, but generally, my kid has been um, inadvertently helping me with my office, which she thought was very funny. So I'm playing on this this Minecraft SMP server, right? Um, it's just a little one with, uh, it was made by one of the other people that has a model made by Roxo, who is making my VTuber model. Um, and so it's very cute. They all call each other siblings. And um, so set up a server and, uh, and now we're all, playing on it. It's very cute. It's just a few of us. But anyways, so um, Clark loves Minecraft. So I was like, do you want to see what our server looks like? And it's turned into now 
um, when I play, I'll let everybody know if I have Clark with me uh, and keep myself just muted and deafened and stuff. Um, and she just walks around and like looks at everybody, everybody's houses if they're okay with it. And she's like um, made a little like secret home for herself in the cave next to the cottage that Summer built. And it's just very cute. It's very wholesome. But she's like asking to play all the time, right? Um, and it's been like like a couple hours once a day. We'll just we'll sit together and play. And she's getting to be more confident just kind of walking around and playing by herself. And I know she's not going to destroy anything, <laughs> right? Um, and so I started, while she's playing, I started just getting up and like doing stuff. <laughs> around my office and today I was like Clark you are helping me so much I was like every time we come up here so you can play Minecraft um I've just been cleaning part of my office she was like you're welcome <laughs> this is very cute the making of a gamer bro it was so fun because like again because she ingests so much Minecraft content um she knows so much more than I do about like hyper specific things. So she was like, oh, Summer made um, a place to do enchanting. We need to enchant all of your tools. I was like, I don't know how to do that. And she was like, it's fine. We just need lapis. I was like, okay. I looked in my backpack and was like, mommy, you don't have lapis. We have to go get lapis now. F went into the cave, just started walking around, was like, they tell you not to dig straight down because if you dig into a cave, you might fall and die. She was like, but I'm going to do it anyway. Dug straight down, found this huge area that was like entirely iron and lapis and was like, you're welcome. And just, <laughs> just started mining iron and lapis for us. And was like, can you tell Summer that I've got some lapis? for enchanting. I was like, sure, <laughs> sure, I'll tell Summer that. It was very cute. Um, yeah, it's adorable. Uh, it's very fun. She's like getting to use all of this Minecraft knowledge that she's accumulated, you know? What's interesting though is that um, she's not sure what Thing. It's kind of like me, but in a different way. She's not sure what things she's seen in videos are mods and what things aren't. So occasionally she'll ask about something and be like, wait, is that a mod? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, honey. <laughs> We're like the best team and the worst team at the same time. But yeah, it's very fun. Um, she keeps asking if she can talk to people and I'm like, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk to anybody. Um, I just think it's, it's better to just have that be a blanket rule of like, you can be on the server, you can walk around and do stuff. You know, I can, you can, you know, we together, we can type things to people if we need to, but um, we don't know when people are streaming. We don't, you know, like, and I don't, I don't want you on other people's streams. And I'm not going to say this to her, but I don't think they want her on their stream either, right? Because it's a child that they don't know. So <laughs> it's just easier to be like, okay, it's fine for you to mess around on our server, but you can't talk to anybody. Which is the same rule that we have with any other game that she plays. That if there if there's other people there, can't accept friend requests, can't you know, no chat, no voice chat, no nothing, right? Um, so just continuing that theme. Um her like standard request age now is ten. So if I'm like, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that right now, right? Because you're I don't know that she fully understands this phrase, but she's kind of accepted it at this point. I I've, I've, will generally say like, if they're streaming, if they're doing what daddy and I do, you're too young to be able to like agree to what they're making, right? Like essentially you're too young to consent to being in their video, right? Like you don't, you don't know what they're making. You don't know who's gonna see it, right? Like all that. 
Um, and so she'll be like, so when I'm 10, <laughs> I'm like, well, the age that, uh, that technically you're allowed to have some of these things is 13. So, you know, if, if it has to do with a video of someone else's and everybody's aware of what's going on and you're aware of what's going on, we can talk about that when you're 13, <laughs> right? And she's like, okay. <laughs> I just think it's easier having this, you know, whether or not she fully grasps it, I think it's just easier to have that conversation as early as possible. Just normalize that concept of like, you know, this isn't something that, that we're gonna even entertain for a while. <laughs> She's six. She's six, so 10, 10 feels pretty old to her. 10 feels like I'm a big kid then, you know. Um, she found out about the word tween. She was like, so when I'm a tween, can I get my ears pierced, sort of a thing. I was like, I think you're technically old enough to get your ears pierced now, if you, if you want. The thing that the thing that I would want is for you to understand exactly what would what the procedure would be because I was like, I worry that if we went in, you might feel nervous. Even grownups feel nervous sometimes because there's a needle going through your skin, right? <laughs> so I was like, I can talk you through it so that you know what's gonna happen, but you might wanna be a little bit older so that it's not quite so scary. Um, and she was like, well, like, how much does it hurt? I was like, I mean, it doesn't hurt that. It Honestly, it doesn't hurt that much, right? But, like, but it, you still see there's still a needle coming from your ear, right? <laughs> so. I gotta hope her skin doesn't react. Yeah, well, I have I have like a nickel allergy and stuff. I would I would try to make sure that whatever got used on her, um, you know, was gonna be as skin safe as possible because, pos you know, it is definitely within the realms of possibility that I uh, have bestowed upon her very sensitive skin. So we'll see. Hi, Brett. How are you, buddy? Apparently I really wanted a tattoo when I was like seven. Oh my gosh. My dad is very against tattoos and I have a very vivid memory of being like, one day when I'm big and I have tattoos and he was like, you're never gonna have tattoos <laughs> sort of thing. I don't know why parents say things like that because at a certain point, the person you're talking to will be an adult <laughs> and can just, can just do it without needing a say so. Oh my gosh, Arnar. Thank you so much for all the gifted subs. Welcome to the cat. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm out of practice because I'm not used to being on camera as often anymore. Uh, welcome to the cat gang, everybody. Be sure to thank Arnar. Did you end up getting any? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a bunch of stuff here, a bunch of stuff on my back. I have tattoos along here. I want more for sure. I've been catching so much Dodger on Geek Enders that I forgot she has hair. <laughs> to be fair, I put my hair up a lot. 
I finally made an appointment to get my hair cut. I'm really excited. Um, I'm not going super short again. I'm going to try and make... I really, I actually really like this length currently. So I'm going to try to make this work and just like add some layers in and stuff. Um, I just, once it, I, I don't know why. I just have so much trouble with hair. <laughs> with like just doing anything with hair, you know. No, I'm not doing fox hair again. I've been lost with my hair for a few years. I just keep doing the same cut. Yeah, I just get annoyed at a certain point and make it really short again. Because there's a part of my brain that's like, if I'm putting it in a ponytail every day anyway to just get it out of the way, then what's the point in growing it out, you know? It feels like I blinked and my hair grew this time. It felt like it grew so fast. And I don't know if that's, I have no idea what sorts of things help hair grow. I don't know if it's because I've been outside more or I don't know. Um, but I am doing my classic. I'm putting it in a ponytail like every day. <laughs> My hair is so long now, down to my waist. I'm male, I really wanna learn how to braid it. Yeah. Braids are fun too, I think. My hair, um, I think because I put it in ponytails so often, my hair uh, is like split and ripped in a lot of places. So when I go to braid my hair, you can see there's just like little little flyaways like through the entire braid <laughs> so I just don't do it <sighs> yeah I'm gonna try to I I think it'll look better if my hair's a bit thicker but I'm I'm basically taking like wolf cutty sort of pictures to um, my hairstylist to see if she thinks that'll work for me or if my hair type is gonna like do what I want it to do, you know? Have you tried silk hair ties? Yeah, but they fall out of my hair. I think cause it's so thin, I don't know. <laughs> It's really hard to like tie it tight enough that it stays in my hair. My hair just slowly falls out of it, you know? What's wolf cutty? If you Google wolf cut, like the like the animal wolf, if you Google wolf cut, you'll see like different variations of it, but it's kind of like layered bangs that are sort of off to the side and then and then it's it's like a very layered cut which typically helps with thinner hair because it adds, the layers add like texture, right? So I don't know, it might work. It might not work at all, we'll see. <laughs> Silk so falls out if you have thin, fine hair. It just slips right out, it does. It's so annoying, yeah. So like my hair rips because I take ones like this, these like really high tension ones, and I just 
I just make it really tight so I know it's not going anywhere. But then when I go to take it out, it rips out so much of my hair. It's fine. I also have some of those like spiral ones. Um, but after using them once, they're stretched out. And I've seen that like you can put them into hot water and they're supposed to shrink back, but I haven't tried that. Did the plaque convince Clark of your credentials? I did show it to her. I did show it to her and she was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, you know, when we went to the park and the guy was there and he was teaching you like left face, right face. And she was like, no, I was like literally last weekend. The, when we did, when we saw the reenactment and the guy and she was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, fine. I guess I was the only one that was obsessing over this. That's fine. <laughs> this or this? These are all one shelf that I that I detached. So this bit was on top of this bit. I separated them so we could get them into my office. And then I was like, actually, that's rad. I want two shelves. So this works perfect. So I kept them apart. This is built by um, a dude in a village nearby. So it's not, it's not like a, <laughs> like an Ikea sort of thing. Where's the second part of your eyebrows? You know, bitch has got thin hair here and here. <laughs> I tint them sometimes because yeah, the hair here is like, barely wants to exist. How's the big boy doing? Sherlock, he's good. He follows me everywhere. It's very cute. I took Peach out, because Peach sleeps in Sam's office, right? So I brought Peach to Sam's office, turned around, and Sherlock had followed me out the door, followed me all the way into Sam's office, and was just sitting there waiting for me, like, all right, wrap this up so we can go back in the house. <laughs> and I was like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. So now he literally tries to follow me every time I take Peach to bed. And I'm like, don't do that. Because Peach, if Peach can see that Sherlock is, is like she's in a pen and Sherlock is not, she freaks out. She does it in the house too. When Peach has to be in her play pen and Sherlock's just walking around, it is nonstop barking. Like, what the fuck? Why does he get to do whatever he wants? And I'm stuck here. What is this? You know? <laughs> Sherlock doing it for the lulls. I think if I I think either. Um, he just, yeah, because we know that he's, he's kind of a bitch with Peach, right? He loves to just mess with her. Um, if I was going to, if I was going to say that it's something sweeter than that, um, he's sick right now, uh, probably terminally. Um, and he's been spending more time with me. And I think maybe, maybe. There's a part of him that's like, I just, I just want to know where you are, right? Like he just, he just wants to follow me everywhere, which is very sweet. So, hi 
Octo. Yeah, um, Sherlock's got a bunch of tumors in here. So we don't know. We don't know how long. He's 16. So he's he's decently old for a cat. Um, but we don't know how much longer we'll have him with us. I know, toothless old man. <sighs> oh my gosh, I didn't even know Octo was in Iron Mouse's thing until Kelly told me. Kelly was like, oh my gosh, you gotta, you gotta watch the Iron Mouse stuff and support your boy Octo. And I was like, I didn't even know Octo was in it. <laughs> I made it to round two spoilers. Good spoilers though. How did you get Sherlock? I seem to recall that you picked him up at a shelter. Yes. My my friend Jeannie, who is still a very good friend of mine, um, Jeannie had gone to a shelter to get her cat. And I was like, God, um, because when I was in college. So here's my trajectory with cats, just really quick. Um, terrified of them as a child because I had only interacted with barn cats and they always scratched me, right? So hated cats, terrified of cats. Um, volunteered at a shelter in college hoping they would give me dogs they never did um they asked if I would take in some kittens I said uh I guess so sure um and fell in love with cats uh and I became their kitten guy so if they had a little litter of kittens I would socialize them get them ready to be able to be adopted basically so I had a few different litters of kittens that they gave me and I was like Maybe cats are all right, you know. Um, and then moved to Los Angeles and was like, oh, my gosh, I would really love to have a cat. Um, Jeannie got a cat, and I was like, I really want to get a cat. Like, how difficult was that? And she was like, I mean, you know, they double check that you have a safe home to bring them to and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. But uh, if you do, then then yeah it's like pretty easy peasy so I went in and um in America uh people are really weird about black cats right so you might think to yourself surely the superstition about black cats isn't so bad even subconsciously that people just wouldn't take in black cats but there's actually a huge problem with getting people to adopt black cats so um the shelter that that Jeannie took me to where she had gotten her cat they had a whole huge section in the middle like a big like closed off area that was just the black cats and it was like and and I was like I'm just gonna go in there I'm gonna sit down and interact with them and see if one of them picks me, basically, instead of me picking one, right? Like, I'll see if one of them just seems to enjoy me and wants to be around me. Um, and that was Sherlock. And he, he, I walked around. He followed me around everywhere. Um, his name at the time was Andre. <laughs> I did rename him. I will admit that. Um, Andre, the Sherlock cat, uh, followed me all over the place. And uh, it was very sweet. And I was like, dang, this is a very sweet little cat, right? Um, and they said they thought he was, that he was a street cat, that, that they had, um, they thought he was like a little over a year old. Um, and uh, yeah, so I took him home and that's that. And he's been with me ever since. It's just so crazy. Yeah. 
whenever people are like, I love dogs because they actually like care if you come home. I, I remember years of my life where when I got home, Sherlock was at the door waiting for me. Like, oh my gosh, mom, how was your day? I missed you so much. <laughs> It was very sweet. And then Watson, yeah, we found in the bushes outside of Maker at the time. And that was like nine years ago, a little over nine years ago now, I think. <laughs> I know. Isn't that wild? I just heard a meow. Which, who was it? <laughs> Working cat is out and about. I have not seen her yet. She's just off doing her job. But she, she uses the litter box. She eats the food, etc. Um... I don't think she needs to use the litter box anymore, <laughs> obviously, but she's still using it occasionally. Do you know if they're catching rats? I mean, we won't know. We, we hope, but that's the joy of having a, a working cat is uh, you just sort of go, I sure hope this cat enjoys doing normal cat shit. <laughs> and if they do, they're going to catch a bunch of rats and voles and all sorts of shit out here. Yeah, the important thing is that she's she's sticking around here. She's not she hasn't run off, you know, so. Yeah. The chicken food still vanishes super fast. There's a system that I keep seeing that I really want to try where you take PVC pipe and you just fill PVC pipe up, basically. Um, and, uh, and the chickens eat through the, from the bottom of, of the pipe, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm hoping... I would like to do that, I think, because currently... I think the box that their food is in, I think rats are literally able to just climb in there. Um, but if I mount it in the right way, I don't think a rat will be able to get in. These rats are pretty big though. Gmart? Yeah, dude, let's play. I was thinking about you because I pitched, I'm on like a, I'm on like an anime podcast thing. Um, and I pitched Odd Taxi to everybody. I was like, yeah, I only watched like the first episode or something, but my friend Gmart said it's fantastic. So maybe we should watch it. Odd Taxi rules. And it's short. I forgot how short it was. Yeah, well, the other option is that I can just put a cap on the bottom of the PVC pipe at night. And then when the rats come in, they'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> so that might be ideal. What 
the fuck? I think I think the wind is just blowing through weird shit. I'm hearing the oddest noises, but it's really windy. So I think the wind is just like blowing through things and I'm hearing like whistles and stuff, you know? <laughs> Bye, G Mart. Sleep well. <sighs> yeah, must have been the wind. <laughs> We do have power lines nearby, I think, yeah. <laughs> I burp. Yeah, sorry, it's called anime cult with a V. So anime cult. <laughs> um, we're we're pushing we're doing a death note episode now. Um we're recording it in a couple of weeks still because um I basically made the request like, can we please record this after my kid is back at school? Because <laughs> Because it is so hard to, like, take care of all of these living things and then and do my job and watch anime, right? So, um, so I was like, once my kid's back in school, I can watch the last of it. I can just slam out the rest of this shit, you know? But um, I'm struggling right now. And they were like, yeah, it's fine. School's back. Time, time for weebin. <laughs> also, okay, so um, the lovely Forecast Gray uh, sent a thing for my birthday, and it got lost. It went to a, uh, it was at a depot for a while, and then, um, after calling, they were like, we don't know where it is. Uh, and it was very sad because apparently there's some like handmade things and, and stuff. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, that sucks so much. Please give me as much information as possible. Hopefully we can find it, you know. Um, and uh, I was going to call and then I got a package and I was like, does your package look like this? Does it say this on the front? And it was the right package. Very excited. So I'm going to open it now. The mysterious lost package. It finally made its way here. So we're going to open it. Okay. So this is a, this is a late birthday box. We're just going to see what's inside. To Dodger, this can be read on stream. Please read this first. Okay, ready? There's a little wormy on it. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Hi, Dodger, it's July already. Where did the time go? There's a box in this package that I meant to post shortly after Clark's birthday. It's a Moomin hangout kit for Clarky and Mom. Whether you read the provi whether you read the provided Moomin book, use the Moomin themed bag to pop to the library for other books to read, or stay at home and watch some episodes of the TV show. Your new Moomin themed mugs and hot chocolate are the perfect accompaniment to whatever activity you choose. Oh my God! 
There are some unicorn-themed sprinkles for a little extra magic and soft marshmallows to add to the cozy vibe. Oh, this is so sweet. The weather's probably too hot for hot chocolate now, but hopefully it will come in sometime and it hasn't been too long that Clark is no longer into Moomins. Also, there's a new bug pin badge for Clark's collection and a couple of my old CDs for Clark to play on the CD player if she's still doing that. That's so sweet. The other packages are something I thought could be a little fun to do on stream if you want. Again, I meant to send these out a while ago. I'm sorry. I was already going to write a letter about how much I've been enjoying the playthroughs this year and what my favorites had been. I was buying you some of the gifts and goofs, and I realized that since they were related to what we had been playing, we could have some fun with it either on your own or with chat. This is very cute. Each package will relate to one of the playthroughs you've done this year. It will start super easy and get harder. Nine Souls will not feature. I put this together before that playthrough, but it's definitely one of my joint favorites so far. Excellent job with the voice acting. Thank you. Start with package one. You'll find a letter with the answers. I hope you have fun. The card and presents for your birthday or now are in here too. I hope you're doing something nice on the day. All the best forecast, Gray. This is so fun. Are you guys ready? We have a little game to play, I guess. Okay, so there's a there's a package here that says answers and has, has a little hole here and I don't know if that's right. I can see why the sadness was there. Um, okay. Oh, this is package three. Okay. Um Okay. <laughs> this is very cute. Okay. 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 Um, should we? Yes, we're going to. We're yeah. I've already. I've got it. Okay. So, I guess each one. Each one has to do with a game that that we played this year. So we're gonna open it and see if we can figure out what the game is. Okay. Opening number one. <laughs> this is very fun. Ah! All right, ready? What game is it? <laughs> it gets more difficult, so we better get this. Yeah, I think this one's pretty obvious. game could it be? Could it be Snufkin? Melody of Moomin Valley? That would be my guess. Oh my gosh, there's a little Moomin sticker. Oh, that's so cute. <gasps> no, it's not a sticker. Oh my gosh, it's a little guy. <laughs> it's just a little guy. That's so cute. I wish I had scissors up here. That's all right. Snuffkin, you can sit here. <laughs> all right, fantastic. You can join us for the rest. <laughs> Okie doke. That's number one. Oh. Number two, rainbow is not part of the clue. Okay. I'm like frantically trying to remember what games we've played this year. <laughs> Congrats, you fished a gay crab, it says. <laughs> so I guess lurk bait? <laughs> That's so hyper specific. <laughs> I love it so much. 
I love that so far both of these things can just be on me. Another crab's treasure. Oh my gosh, right, because he said that the rainbow didn't matter. Another crab's treasure. That's, it's gotta be that. You're absolutely right. Crab game. Crab game. Oh my gosh. Come here, sir. Wait. This bit's here, but this bit's here. It is such a cool pin. I can guarantee you my child's gonna try to steal this from me and she will not be getting it. Thank you very much. This is mine. I'm very excited about this. Oh my gosh, there is so much tape on this. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! <laughs> it's so cute. I love it so much. Okay. I am so curious where this pin is from. It's so cute. Okay. Another crab's treasure, of course. I was like, wait. Okay, number three. Oh my gosh, I already borked up number two. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna get the rest of these. Dice. And then I'm worried about the difficulty scaling. Me too. <laughs> Shortbread fingers and dice with runes on them. I'm opening these. These are so pretty, by the way. Look at these. They're so pretty. <gasps> Banishers! Oh my gosh, you're absolutely right! Banishers, that's gotta be what it is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, we gotta, we gotta have a shortbread now. Big brain, huge brain. Traditional Scottish shortbread fingers. Oh my God, they're so crumbly. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh my God, they're so messy. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Right, this is so clever. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, they're just plain. Oh. Okay. Banishers. 
100%. Okay. There's two left. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. This guy? Mmm. I don't know how long it's been there. Forecast Gray in chat spotted. Everybody's loving this, <laughs> by the way. Okay, number four. I seem to keep giving you cursed things. Maybe this can go with the Toby mug. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I love this. <laughs> I love it. What game is this referring to? <gasps> Animal Well. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, I love this so much. This is so fun. Okay, yep, all right, yes. <laughs> That's incredible. What the fuck? This is so hyper-specific. How did you find this? <laughs> I love it. Where am I gonna hide it in my house? I'm so excited. Like this feels like the sort of thing that Somebody needs to stumble onto somewhere and be like, <laughs> you made it? I mashed things together. What? <laughs> you kit bashed an animal well goof? I love this so much. <laughs> good oh my goodness amazing okay all right oh oh a tiny bit of it got mad let's see i think i i can reattach it there's a you see oh, right in there there's a tiny bit that came off but I found it and I can I can re-glue it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, I promise. Okay. Last one. A reminder that these go up in difficulty. I'm nervous. What game did we make a bunch of Shape of Water goofs with? <laughs> Harold Halibut, yeah. I've never seen this movie. <laughs> I've never seen this movie, but I've watched a lot of reviews. Because it's so funny to have people be like, so I guess you're all here to find out, does, 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 do, do they, do they do? <laughs> I 
Anyways. Um, great. <laughs> I guess I'll watch this movie finally. Hi, Subber. Um, dude, this, this has been so funny. Like, what an amazing thing to set up and get sent to me. Thank you so much. I assume this was one of the things that you were like, some of the stuff in that box is literally irreplaceable. Now knowing that you made this. It's amazing. Um, and I love that you turned it into a game for chat. That's so fun. Let's, you know what? Let's look at the answers. Let's double check that we're correct. Okay. <laughs> They're all covered. Okay. Um, number one, Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley was our guest. Hopefully this one was super easy. It was mainly just an excuse to get you a piece of Snufkin merchandise. Do crime. Absolutely. Um, number two, I said lurk bait. And then chat was like, surely it's another crab's treasure, which makes way more sense. It is another crab's treasure. In honor of the gay crab emote from stream fishing, I couldn't believe my luck. Stumbling across not only a cool hermit crab pin, but a rainbow one at that. Yeah, it's so many people in chat were like, I need that pin. <laughs> I, need th I need that pin. Uh, number three was banishers, we think. The shortbread and the, and, the, and the rune dice, right? Okay. Banishers! Hopefully the clues were good enough for this one. It was hard. I wasn't sure what the correct witchy stuff would be. I didn't want to anger demons or send you things you wouldn't be able to use. In the end, I settled for some Scottish shortbread in honor of Red McWraith and some runic dice that might come in handy to use in D&D. &D. My heart is still recovering from this one. I know. What a good game. <sighs> what a good game. Um, okay. The animal well. Animal well. Right. Animal well. Wait a minute, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you. I still watch the scene when you first come across the ostrich and the bit where you aced the frisbee puzzle. This cursed item is now in your home. I like how I said I wanted to send you things that you would be able to use afterwards, and I still sent you this. The goof was too strong. My apologies. I will use it to confuse guests. That is a fantastic use, I think. Um... Okay, and number five, and number five was um, Howell was was Harold Halibut, surely. Yes. Now you can finally watch Shape of Water. Sorry, not sorry. I actually really enjoyed this film. Please don't judge me. It's possibly my favorite game ever that we've played on stream along with American Arcadia. I still think a lot about both of those games. Although LGBT rap berserk and oily Timmy will always have a place in my heart. Honorable mentions. Ready? Rogue Prince of Peaceeps. Also Nine Souls, currently joint first with Howold as my game of the year. But will it have the same long-term impact that Harold did? Remains to be seen as we play more games. What have been your favorites this year so far? You know, I feel like every year I have to I have to go into Steam, go into Epic, go into all of the, the places where I get games and scroll back through to even remind myself what we've played. Like, because sometimes I think of a game and then I go to find it and I'm like, I played that last year, <laughs> you know? Um, was Small Saga this year? If it was, that's definitely up there. I loved Banishers. That was such a good game. Nine Souls was amazing. I still think about Nine Souls. <clears throat> Small Saga was end of last year. Small Saga was last year. It was in the game tournament. Oh, gosh. I don't even remember. I sent this shirt at the start of January. 
fantastic. This is so fun. Um, okay, so we played the game. There's a couple more things in here, so I'm gonna open them now. Forecast Gray, that was so fun. I loved that. There was obviously so much like care and attention put into that. I love that you made this. Like, it's so good. Thank you so much. Um, this, I assume, is the birthday gift. Reminder that this was sent in July. It was supposed to get here so far before my birthday that there's a modifier in the note of like, I guess you can open your birthday present early, right? So <laughs> that's how long this poor box was, was trapped. <laughs> I love the bird tape. Oh. Okay, wait, and then, ah! Okay, I'm sorry. Thought it might be useful on your desk for your jewelry. <gasps> it is, that's so useful. I always just chuck, like when I have to take my earrings off, I just put them on the base of this monitor and they slide off all the time. I'm so excited, thank you. <laughs> It's actually so useful. And then there's another mushroom in here. <laughs> the hard part is going to be that I now have to try and keep um, Peach from finding any of these. It used to be like, man, I really hope that I can keep this away from my child, but that's not the worry anymore. It's no longer the worry. <laughs> Thank you so much, they're so And then this is the Clark and Mum box. Should I, I'm wondering if I should open this just me or if I should open it with Clarky. I'll just peek, in. I'll just peep. I'll just peep inside. Ah! Oh my gosh, there is a Moomin mug in here. <gasps> There's two! I'm sorry, I don't mean to be yelling so much. There's this one. So cute. And then I'm gonna try to just like place them carefully back in so she doesn't know I opened it by myself. <laughs> Hi shoes. And then there's this one. Um, Sam has revealed to me that he thinks ceramic mugs are like insanely superior. Um, so he might steal that. Marshmallows, <gasps> some CDs. Sing-alongs and lullabies for Curious George. <gasps> I used to have these CDs. What the fuck? I I, I had the classic Disney CDs. I had this exact CD. This is fucking me up. And then a little tote and a book inside. Ah! Oh my gosh, this is so cute. No, I'm gonna open it. <laughs> I was like, I should probably leave that wrapped up. I'm not going to though. Had, what happened to them? Um, I'm so scared of being a hoarder that at a certain point in my life, I was like, I haven't listened to my CDs in so long, I'm getting rid of them. Um, so I, I gave them to a library, which I think is fine. Um, but occasionally I have been like, man, I really wish I still had some physical CDs. <laughs> The Invisible Child and the Fur Tree. 
two Moomin stories. <gasps> oh my God. Clark is going to be so jazzed. She loves Ninny. In The Invisible Child, the isolated Ninny is helped to regain her voice and take her rightful place in the world using a simple Moomin recipe. She's welcomed into the Moomin family and treated with equality and respect. Um, Clark loves Ninny, so that'll probably go down a treat. And then a little tote! <laughs> yes! So cute. So cute. Thank you so much. This is very sweet. Clark's going to be very excited. She might not scream like I did, but you know. <laughs> I'm so glad it appeared. Dude. Yeah. It would have been so sad for it to... Oh, there's the envelope that says a little nostalgia on your birthday. Can I open that? Okay. I'm just double checking. <laughs> An old Sonic comic, let's go! <laughs> the good, the bad, and the unknown. Sonic the Hedgehog versus Shadow versus Metal Sonic! Oh my goodness. <sighs> For anybody who doesn't know this, my like, I don't even know how to describe this. But when I was a child, I collected every single Sonic comic that I could um, for a very long time. So I love this. And you're right. It is very nostalgic. <laughs> so real for that dude. I had like specific ones that were my favorites that were just worn to pieces. I got into a very long conversation with Chad Quant, who is another huge Sonic fan. I got into a very long conversation with Chad Quant at a certain point about um, the family that they established for Knuckles in the comics and how uh, and how they basically had to like retcon them somehow. So they just like <clears throat> threw them in a vortex and pretended they never existed. Like it's crazy. It's the Sonic comics were so buck wild. Um, I loved them though. I was obsessed with them, but they 100%, they like reached a point just in the basic story. They reached a point where it was too serious. There was too much going on. It was too serious. Like every comic was so dramatic and they, they just reset at a certain point. <laughs> they had to, they just reset. They were like, we don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> they 100% jumped many a shark, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, all all comic series do it, I guess. All all long running comic universes eventually are like, and that's enough of that. <laughs> Gonna start that shit over. Um, I need to blow my nose really badly. I keep touching it. Clark was like, "Why do you have an entire roll of toilet paper up here?" Because I have to blow my nose sometimes. Okay. I'm muting.
Great. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> no, I've been getting steadily more and more like congested and having more and more sickness symptoms over the last few days. <laughs> it happens. I'm shocked I haven't gotten sick more this summer, to be honest. <clears throat> Do you look at your snots after you blow your nose? Of course. Just like poops. Snot, just like poops. You should check the color. What's going on in your body, dude? Okay, forecast, great, thank you. And just in general, thank you so much for everything in this box. It was very sweet. There's obviously so much effort that went into it, and I'm so glad that we wound up finding it. Everything comes down to poop, always. Always. <clears throat> Biologic biology is slime and poops. I had a teacher who wound up being very problematic. Um, but I still remember her in class in high school um giving us a really long talk about how we always needed to look at our poops. I was like, you should always, always turn around and look at your poop. You should always know what a normal poop looks like for you <laughs> and what a not normal poop looks like for you. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. I'm still thinking about the Sam quote from last night. Since when was it hot? I know. I um I got my <laughs> I got my first like we like we like settled on the first outfit for the VTuber that's being made. Roxo sent me like a like the first like stable sketch and I was like, this looks amazing. It's so fucking good. And I showed it to Sam. And Sam was like, what the fuck? It's hot. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, I, yeah, I guess. And he was like, you said you were making a weird little monster. And I was like, it is a weird little monster. And he was like, no, no. <laughs> I was like, it is a weird little monster, though. It can be both, Sam. <laughs> but it was a very funny reaction. But yeah, it's looking very good. I'm really excited. It was funny because originally um, he made the outfit that that the tiny one wears, right? Um, because I don't know how to design clothes <laughs> or like outfits that's not in my wheelhouse whatsoever. So I was like, this is the original thing. The first outfit can just be that, right? So we sketched that and I was like, yeah, it looks good. And then he was like, okay, I have an idea for another outfit. And basically made a way better version of the original outfit. <laughs> Just like pushed the alternative vibes like a bit further, added way more stuff and details. And I was like, what the fuck? This looks amazing. I don't even want the first, like, can we just smush these two outfits together? <laughs> because the first one is so blah compared to this. <laughs> um, so yeah. 
I'm very excited. It's all going really well, is, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> He <laughs> he. Gonna commission the new outfit for the small mush later, maybe. But um, I really don't don't like. I think I think the simple outfits and the simple stuff works for for the small one. You know. <clears throat> oh my gosh, my eyes suddenly hurt. Small mush needs to be able to dab, so true. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's going well. And like I was saying, occasionally people will, will say like, I'm excited for the new model, but I'm really going to miss the little one. Um, I fully intend on continuing to use the little one. I think there's a lot of value in having like, both options, you know? <laughs> Sometimes you just want to be small. Yeah. From what I can tell, whether it's like the mascot or you know, like a sort of cheapified version of themselves or something. A lot of people have like their main one and then some sort of like a goofy little option, you know. Iron Mouse has like 30 versions of herself. Right. Not even remotely close to that level though. <laughs> we just like to acknowledge. <laughs> But yeah, from what I can tell, that's like, like Iron Mouse is really well known for that, right? For like taking a break, coming back and being like, here's another model. Here's another, here's another sick ass model I got made, right? So yeah. Is this VTuber model talk? It is. Hi, Fire Seal. I was just saying that um, I have like the first um, sketch done of uh, the the new model that's getting made, and it looks awesome. I'm very excited. <clears throat> Here's, here's pie in the sky, right? For me, four options, okay? So currently, we have, currently we've got middle boys, right? We've got, we've got goofy little guy, and we've got relatively normal, right? So the, the other ends of the spectrum that down the line I would love to have is just a mushroom. <laughs> It's just a mushroom. <laughs> like, like, you know, um, you get it. I like hyper realistic mushy. It's just a, it's, just, it's, it's a regular ass mushroom, but a model. Right. And then, <laughs> and then, um, the other end I think is like push, push the, the monster vibes 
um like more more body horror y, more like like fungal fungal growth monster sort of thing, I think would be so sick. So like those those are the other two that I would love to have one day. Like how um how like Buff Pup, right, has like the fully like wolfed out version that sort of a thing but like what would that be for for mushy <clears throat> yeah i think it would be super sick yeah genie does that too that's true This, this was a birthday gift I just got. <laughs> the box we opened on stream is very cute. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're doing with the model that's being made right now is there are lots of little um, like mushrooms growing out of the body that like rips through the clothes. It looks so cool. Like just just push that really far. I think would be so sick. But then I'd have to have a big old warning on my stream. <laughs> It's gonna spook me, but bless that design. The one that's being made right now, I don't think is is gonna be spooky at all for people really. Um, but but again, a future like monster version. Yeah, I think might be might be spooky. I sure hope it has eyes. <laughs> How many eyes? You need a mushy Warframe? We were talking about that last time I was playing Warframe, I think. Chat was talking about the different frames that have like mushroom vibes, you know? Man, Warframe's so fun, dude. <laughs> Warframe's so fun, dude. What happened? I didn't expect to fall so in love with Warframe. No, I, cause I never, cause Summer, I don't ever, I don't think I'll ever want to have just normal eyes on that model. Story's getting closer and closer. I know. I know. We finally got to Saturn, right? I think we unlocked Saturn. Yes, we did. Cause we, cause we got a new story unlock. Um, we haven't reached the story yet though, apparently. We still haven't reached the, the quest where everybody's like, here's where it fucking kicks off. So. Neptune is when the big plot happens. Okay, I just got to Saturn. So I just got to the to the part with um, the Nepo baby. That's where we're at right now. The 
the Nepo baby and the and the um and the dead leader pre second dream. Yeah, have not gotten to second dream yet. I heard that game is grindy. It is, and I love it. <laughs> Deadlock Protocol. That's what it is. That's the name of the quest I'm on. Yeah. Um, it's so fun. I love it. Is it grindy? 100%. One, one <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Oh my gosh, I bet Mag is done, right? Mag's definitely done. Hi. Um. Oh my gosh, okay, so I have to go. <laughs> Just realizing what time it is. Uh, I have to go a little early today. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, we've got Sunforge tonight. If you watch it, it's a DD and d show that Joe's doing. Um, and it's fun, dude. It's a fun time if you, uh, if you wanna come watch. You open your PO box only for your birthday? No, 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 no. Um, anytime, like, I normally wait for like two or three things to show up before I open them. Um, but this was was meant to be opened on my birthday and it got lost for a really long time. Um, and so we were really invested in it showing up and it finally showed up. So I was like, I have to open it. <laughs> so we we opened up the one box, but it was it was a bunch of stuff. It was very sweet. So don't send anything perishable. No. You shouldn't do that anyway, because apparently stuff gets lost trying to get to me, <laughs> so. Um, okay, let's read this off and then um, I'm gonna go. Uh, Raid leader's open if anybody wants to grab it. Also, Forecast Gray just did a Valentine. Huh. This is, this is a shout out to my amazing friends who just got married yesterday. I want them to know how glad I am to be part of their lives. That's very sweet. Um, Asabov, thank you for the 28 months. Asher Lee for the 96. Cynical Singer for the 74. Brosif of Brostar for the six years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Plasma Phoenix for the 78. Arnar, again, thank you very much for the gifted subs. If you were gifted a sub by Arnar or anybody else, please say thank you. It's very generous. Flint Whitelock, thank you for the 69. Ugh. Demon Lemming for the 121. I am Spellbound. Thank you for the 45. Steinkey for the 79. Hrodgard. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Cat Gang. Uh, I hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you for the subscription. Starfleet Skater. Thank you for the 43. Drum for the 69. <laughs> Nachos for the 75. Junior is Junior for the 46. And Dr. Jazz Fist for the 82. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, everybody. Um... Manda, I would love to raid Manda. All righty, absolutely. Go say hi to Manda. Manda's been working so hard on this stuff for Sam. I don't know if that's what she's working on right now, but uh, She's just been like cranking it out, crushing it, working her butt off. Um, so go send her some love. She's awesome. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Take care of yourselves and bye bye.